sports, languages. Do you think there are similarities between them? Let's find out. This is Firas from Speaker Arabic. Welcome back. Many years ago, I practiced basketball for some time. And I was enjoying my time. I was dribbling, shooting throw, free throws, and it was really fun time. I put a great amount of time on this, and it was fun, and I built a great muscle on basketball. The same goes for languages. If you put the effort, if you put the time to practice, for example, listening, and you increase your listening abilities, and you can understand people speaking, you can understand podcasts, watching TV shows, etc. And you have a lot of great time, such as basketball. Also, languages has muscle memory. You, our brain will have muscle memory and you will start using it. And if you stop for some time, continue, you will have the same experience. You will remember what you learned in the past and this is a great, great thing to have in languages. Another similarity, turning patience into fun. Three years ago, I was practicing to run the marathon, the Istanbul marathon, and I was learning Turkish at that time. I used the practice time to listen to Turkish podcasts. It was really fun. I learned Turkish while I'm running. I was running longer time. You know that if you are practicing marathon, you have to run in the end 42 kilometers or 21 mile and it's, it was really long time. The hardest thing in this stuff is the psychological part of it. Why? Because you are going to run for four, five hours or more. And this is really hard for the mind. You have to practice it. And the best thing to do is to learn something while you are learning. And what I did is practicing Turkish at that time. What I did also, I was learning something in Turkish. So I, I used many things at the same time. I was learning about technology, about e-commerce in Turkish while I'm, I'm running. <laughs> so it's really crazy how I mixed all things together. It was really helpful and at the same time fun. And I built my momentum. I built the longer time of running. The same goes for languages. If you are doing, for example, workout in the gym, and it it's must be like one hour or one half hour, you put some earbuds and you're listening for Arabic podcast or TV shows, for example, you can watch while you are running in the gym. You increase the fun time while you are learning Arabic. This is really, really helpful. I, I use it myself and many friends use it also. I think it's time for me to barge in. And I'd like to talk about the similarities between sports and learning a language from a skill perspective. So what I mean by this, learning a language is actually a skill in and of itself. And so just like doing sports and learning some certain skill in a sport, when you're talking about language, like you, let's say for example that you'd like to learn how to speak in a, a local dialect. So the speaking, the speaking part of that is a skill in and of itself. And just like sport, When dealing with that, you will have to break down that skill into smaller subskills, smaller pieces. And then you will have to tackle these smaller subskills one at a time before you can actually be proficient in the skill itself. The same actually goes for sports, right? So if you're learning to, let's say, make a layup in a basketball game, then you will have to break down the skill of making a layup in a basketball into smaller pieces And then you have to dress these smaller pieces one at a time before you can be proficient in doing the layup itself. Now, I hope that I was able to pique your interest, so if I did, you can watch that video here or there. Back to Firas. An important factor for languages and sports is motivation. You have to have motivation. If you don't have motivation to work every single day, to have fun, to have the goal, In the, in the back of your mind that I want to learn languages for, for example, to travel to another country or to improve my working condition or anything. Or if I am learning languages for my wife, my spouse, to have meaningful conversation with my friends. If I am living in a country where I have many Arab friends, it's very important to have the right motivation. The same goes for sports. If someone wants to be really professional at basketball, he wants to play in NBA, for example, 
Obviously, the motivation won't be enough like, I want to be real rich. Money is important factor, no doubt about it. I'm not saying uh, someone who wants to be in the professional uh, teams, he doesn't think about money. Money obviously is important. However, no, money is not enough to practice every single day. Maybe he wants to play in certain teams, or if he wants to be like influencing other people, having some impact, social impact, this is the motivation for increasing and playing every single day to practice every single day. So this is how languages and sports connect to each other. And let's not forget that in order to strive in languages and sports, you have to be in the right environment, like positive environment, motivated environment, people that really love what they are doing. Not only they are into something for fame or money, they are not only this. They are into love, they, they love languages, they love sports. If you are walking on marathon, they love to run every single day. If you are into practicing basketball or they are really, really into basketball, they will practice every single day out of love. I hope you enjoy your time watching this video. If you want to know more about the difference between Arabic and English, you can watch the video from here. And if you want to learn to avoid the mistakes in learning languages, learning Arabic, you can watch the video from here. Like this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.